Well, we'll kick off the show with former President Olushagun Obasanjo's latest criticism of members of the National Assembly for fixing their salaries and allowances themselves, describing the act as immoral. Obasanjo spoke on Friday when he hosted some members of the House of Representatives in Abelkuta, the Ogun State capital. The former president said that it is the duty of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission to determine what public office holders earn. Look at, in your own case, with all due respect, you are not supposed to fix your salary or your allowances. It's supposed to be done by the Revenue Mobilization and what is Fiscal uh, Commission. Uh, Fiscal Commission. Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal, Fiscal Commission. Commission. Okay. But you decide to pay yourself the allowances that you give yourself, newspaper allowances, uh, pound allowances, sheeting allowances, <laughs> to give yourself all sorts of things, with all due respect. And you know it's not right. It is not right. It is not right for me to be the one to declare, determine what I pay myself. It's immoral. And then you are doing it. The Senate is doing it. And you beat your chest. And in some cases, even the executive give you what you are not entitled to. You all got $200 million uh, Naira. All right. Um, Siva Deswa, good morning. I mean, morning. Morning. Uh, former president has spoken well as an elder spokesman. I mean, we elder have... Elder statesman. Elder statesman. <laughs> what did I say? Spokesman. spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a spokesman for the elders. For the nation. For the nation too. as well. <laughs> Absolutely. As an elder statesman, he has spoken very well. I mean, uh, but you know that we've seen this video trending on social media and there's been a lot of criticism, um, you know, following the video because uh, a lot of, um, you know, people have said that, you know, back in 2005, he was, I believe, one of um, the people that had this uh, constituency project, <laughs> you know, saying that you know, he had pushed a bid to have a third term of presidency. But that's besides the point. Mm. One of the reasons the protesters are out there is because people are saying that, you know, the government has to slim down. They have yeah. to cut the cost of governance. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest issue now. And if you recall, I believe back in 2018, uh, Senator Shea Usani had said that they make 13, over 13 million naira mm. per month. We know that these allocations have been shrouded in secrecy and, uh, you know, about NLC also had released, you know, a breakdown at one point of how much they have, uh, they, they, they get allocated 2.8 or 2 point something million for hardship allowance. I mean, ridiculous allowances that, you know, have been banded around. And Abbas Anjo here has said that, you know, it is not even in their place. I, be, I agree with him absolutely that it is immoral for them to allocate such huge allowances, especially at this trying time. I mean, what's your take on that? Well, I mean, OJ, God bless uh, former president uh, for Nigeria, uh, elder statesman, elder, elder statesman. spokesman, yes. as you said. <laughs> um, you know, this is not the first time that he will be on this uh, point. Uh, in 2021, when, as a matter of fact, there was a federal high court judgment, you know, on this same matter, uh, President Obasanjo just spoke, you know, in a similar vein. Uh, I think it was uh, Barista Monde Ubani, who, by the way, has been enlisted uh, to become uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, together with a few um, uh, civil society organizations. Uh, I think Serap was there, I think uh, Enough is Enough, you know, and maybe one other, who went to court uh, to say that it is illegal, you know, beyond being immoral, it is illegal for the National Assembly Service Commission to determine the salaries and allowances and emoluments of um, uh, uh, the our lawmakers, our federal lawmakers. And the federal high court in Abuja ruled that indeed, it is not in the place of, of uh, the National Assembly to determine such allowances. It is only uh, the Ramfak Re Revenue Mobilization, mm -hmm. you know, that as, as you said, that has the authority. They determine what the president, what the vice president, what the executives and political office holders get. Yeah. They must also determine by law, you know, what uh, federal lawmakers get. But we have a situation of impunity in, uh, and sadly, something pretty similar to 
the constituency uh, project allowance, which again, as we have you know, emphasized on this program, has no basis in, in law. law. Yes. In yes. law. But I mean, uh, a few people less than, I mean, in total, they less than 500 or thereabout, you know, will just constitute themselves uh, into uh, an illegality, in yeah. in, in, into, into a, a band of people that nobody can challenge. And I hate the idea of this chummy relationship between the National Assembly and the president. Yeah, One must be able to check the other, you know. Um, but you see, in 2021, when that happened, uh, uh, President uh, Mohamed Buhari sadly uh, maybe didn't have the balls to uh, speak in the fashion that uh, Obasanjo, you know, has spoken. He, he actually started this idea of uh, uh, what President Tinubu has now done for the local government, you know, the autonomy in terms of their finances. But he neglected to speak you know, to this uh, thing, because of course, you, maybe they would think that they, they wouldn't want to uh, um, ruffle feathers, you know, just let them, just allow them. But like you rightly observed, it speaks to one of the key demands of not just the, the protesters, but even the silent majority of Nigerians, Absolutely. you know, who are appalled, you know, by this indecent, uh, immoral uh, uh, amount. Let us also note, however, uh, that the court ruled that um, their salaries and allowances should be reviewed because it hadn't been reviewed as of 2021 in the last 10 years against realities of Nigeria, which is an important thing to say because when if Ramfa should review uh, salaries of law federal lawmakers against the, the current realities, it forms a basis, therefore, for let's say unions and labor unions to negotiate with the president to say if you could do this based on certain parameters because the country is hard inflation is rising why not for the average you know mm -hmm. what yes. maybe the tone of the negotiation will have been different yes. so my point is that we must commend president obasanjo yes. we let's hope that president tinobu will also toe that line to say what is right is right do the right thing and once you are pointing accusing fingers at the national assembly then also real uh, you know you must also remember that there are areas, even within the executive, mm -hmm. that you two will have to deal with. As I say, if you point a finger to someone else, <laughs> for three, the remaining for, <laughs> for, mm, the I'm pointing four. Yeah. back at you now. I think one thing is that you would find the National Assembly in an uproar about people challenging them or their salaries or their allowances. But transparency is as good for you as it is for me. Mm -hmm. Transparency reduces corruption in government. It reduces, you know, our lack of knowledge is by design and it's by design of the National Assembly. You can't come out and say, okay this is my salary when we know you have allowances let me know that based off of that salary the lifestyle or the things that you're doing not, do not necessarily match with what we are perceiving mm -hmm. as a nigerian public yeah. also there is a there's a joke now that with the lo local governments becoming more financially independent that you would have people who are even running from national assembly to go and become a local government chairman mm -hmm. and this is because they are used to doing local government work yeah. because mm -hmm. constituency projects should not be with the legislative body no, not at it all. should lie with the local government Absolutely. and so when we are having impropriety in terms of their functions impropriety in terms of their pay and we're having obscurity and obfuscation by the people in power there is no transparency there is no that corruption can thrive mm -hmm. and there is no trust between the public and our public servants oh. all right well said guys well, all right, former President Obasanjo is one man that doesn't know how to window dress any matter of national importance or for a bit of introspection on his comments. Though so we're now being joined by Honorable Sergius Ogun, is a member of the Labour and one time representative of Essen North East and Essen South East constituency of Edo State in the House of Representatives. He will also offer his thoughts on preparations ahead of the September 21 governorship election in Edo State. Well, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us on the morning show this morning. I'd like to uh, start off with... Um, Hi, thank you, Audrey. Good morning. Thank you. I'd like to start off with uh, former President Olusha Basan just comments when he criticized um, National Assembly members for allocating uh, huge sums of salary to themselves. You are where a former um, member of the House of Representatives, I'm sure that you have heard the debacle and accusations of deceit meted on the members of the House of Representatives after they failed to meet up with, you know, the promise of slashing their salaries by 50% to help uh, 
mitigate uh, economic hardship. Well, spokesman for the House, Rotimi Aking, had blamed bureaucracy for the delayed implementation. Uh, many of us would like to understand how bureaucracy should come into play at this very troubling time. Uh, well, the, the, the most talked about salary, like you heard the, the current speaker, uh, Honorable Abbas, saying salary is about 600,000 Naira. Is, uh, is not what we should be talking about in the National Assembly. I think Sheikh Hussani mentioned this, Senator Sheikh Hussani. The, the salary is fixed. Uh, is the running cost, I'm sure the president was, uh, the former president was referring to. And the, um, why, why do we have the running costs the way the country is today? You are expected to go to your, to have a constituency office. You are supposed to maintain that constituency office. A trip from anywhere in Nigeria to your constituency today, the minimum you require will be 1.5 million just to visit your constituency. So what he's talking about is the running cost, which I think is part of the budget of the National Assembly that is fixed that is fixed for, for members. That's the one he's talking about. But the salary is fixed, salary is known. But the only cost is the one that the National Assembly uh, leadership tends to uh, pay members. That's the much talked about big money, big salaries, but it's not salary. Because you retire the only cost at the end of every month. If it's a salary, you don't retire your salary. Salary, salary is a wage that you earn. But, um, Talking about bureaucracy to uh, remit the fifty percent, yeah, I can, I can, I can understand that. You know how it is now. Uh, those that work in the in, uh, in the civil service, things can be slow. But if they have made their commitment, I'm sure they would, they would commit to it. All right, uh, Honourable Ogun, thanks for setting the tone for uh, this conversation. But I'd like to uh, pick up from where uh, OG, my colleague, stopped. Uh, uh, and that is the area where you said that the salary uh, of the National Assembly, I'm sure in particular, you know, uh, the House of Reps, is fixed. Uh, and that what President, former President Obasanjo uh, was talking about uh, is about running cost. Um, uh, but I'm sure that you, you are aware that in 2021, uh, there was a court uh, judgment uh, uh, by federal High court, I believe, in Abuja, uh, where a barrister, uh, Monde Ubani, uh, and a couple of uh, civil society organizations, you know, uh, went to court uh, to challenge the practice in the National Assembly that you have just referred to, uh, whereby the leadership of the Assembly uh, fixes and determines what each lawmaker uh, gets. And the verdict of the court is that they have no right uh, whatsoever, uh, uh, and that the uh, uh, National Assembly Service Commission has no right to even determine uh, the allowances or running costs and things like that. Uh, don't you think that um, uh, what we're experiencing, uh, what you experienced while you were there, what your colleagues uh, who are there at this time are, are, you know, are doing, uh, is against the law? And that's at the heart, one, of what President Obasanjo just spoke against, and it's at the heart part of what the demands uh, of those who went out for 10 days to protest against hardship and hunger in Nigeria you know, we are complaining about. Do you think that it is right, uh, moral, and proper uh, for the National Assembly to carry on even when there is a court judgment against it? I'm not, I'm not aware of that court judgment. 2021, I was still in the House. Maybe I don't think it's with respect to running cost. Running cost is just like interest that um, public servants get. That's why you have to retire it. So I, I think at times we, we miss it when we give attention to such things. Now, we have talked about the National Assembly shaking down the MDS, the ministries, department, and, and agencies. If they were getting enough money, why are they, sh why are they harassing the MDS? So, and then we, we I heard Oji talking about constituency project a while ago. The truth is, when you put something in the budget, because of the kind of where we are from, the country we are in or the continent, if you go to Abuja and all you do is just bills and motions and you don't bring anything back to your constituency, you can be sure that you will not be re-elected or your people will even will not feel your impact. But that's your job. Your so job you is to make laws. Honorable, 
That, that's your job. And there is Probably, no, yes, there is I, no I, legal I, basis yes, and for the constituency project that you are saying. It's like saying, I'm going to Abuja just to go and take money to show to my people. That's the job of the, of the, of the local government. It's the job of the state governors. It's the job of the federal government to provide other ancillary mm. services, not the job of the lawmaker. Yours will be to ensure that those things yeah, that, that others are bringing, in my opinion, sir, you know, and as, a, as it is done in other places, to ensure that such things are done for your constituency, but not to get the money to go and execute them. Mm. I, I was go on, trying sir. to lay a foundation. All right, go on, please. Go on. I, I was trying to lay a foundation. I, th I think it's the society that we are in. That's the point I'm trying to make. I, in my time in the National Assembly, I had over 90 something bills in just eight years. So I wasn't one of those that went there chasing contracts and all that. No contract, I had over 40 something billion worth of projects in my constituency. Not a dime got into my pocket. I can swear on anything. So the point I'm making, I'm just saying, in the kind of country that we are in, and if we must correct this, it takes everybody, including yourselves in the media, to say, look, a National Assembly member or a National Assembly, somebody that is vying for an office, like the, that of House of Rep or Senate, and it's coming to tell you that I will do roads, I will bring water, I will build schools, is not his responsibility. It's the responsibility of the executive. The, the, the president and his executive, and so that his ministers, the, com the governor and his commissioners, and the local government chairman and those that serve with him, is their responsibility, not a legislator. We don't say that, we don't do that. So people campaign about bringing these things to the community when they are elected. So the first thing they do when they get there, they are trying everything they can to begin to do all that. But that's not even the point today. I think we are deviating. The point is, is again, the society we are in. You, go, you don't go home as a National Assembly member and say, oh, well, my people, I came to greet you. Uh, you know, I have a bee that I'm going to present on Tuesday when I go back to the house. So pray for me that that bee goes through. And you don't put money down. You don't feed people. People are coming to say that I can't pay my children's school fees. People are coming to say that uh, they are parents or their children are in hospital, you don't put money down. And be rest assured that either you will even be recalled, which is not something that is a common practice in this part of the world, or something else. You can't campaign for anybody. You can't even campaign for yourself. So we have to go back. If the executive were meeting their responsibility to the people or responsibilities to the people, none of this would have been happening. It would have meant that the National Assembly members or House of Assembly members who concentrate on their core mandate of making laws for the people. But because there is failure in the system, as well as the local government system, people now come to the National Assembly members. When I was in the House, my colleagues used to say, if you take away the National Assembly, this democracy will collapse. Because with this so-called running cause, the day it hits your account, you are getting calls from everywhere. We used to say that there is a monitoring spirit following that money. The money hits your account, everybody's calling for rent, talking about my roof is blown, I need to fix my roof, and you must attend to these things. So I go back again to say, if the governors, if the local government chairman, we're attending to these things, primary health care, education, because even the UBE Act says clearly, primary education is free, secondary is free, according to JS3. But because the public schools are not in shape, many people are sending their children to private schools. And some of them come to you to support them. So what do you do as an elected person? Talking about from this climb, from this climb. You know, if you refer to other climbs, even in the U.S. anyway, I know they, got, they get some, what's called a uh, Port Berry, you know, as like a constituency project, money you get to work in your constituency. So but my point is, let's give attention to that only cost. Maybe it's not needed, but if we, now that we have the local government autonomy, if the local government chairman will work and we can task them to work, we can hold their feet to fire to work, most of the pressure on the legislators, be it in the House of Assembly or the National Assembly, will come down. And then we begin to address the need for National Assembly members to live on their salary, yes. which oh, is honorable. basically about one million naira or so. Honorable, okay. 
So you said that we should pay attention to the running yeah. cost. You were a member of the House of Reps from 2019 to 2023. What was your running cost from one month to another? Uh, well, I not want to be... <laughs> Uh, no, what was your running cost from one to another? Said for this. You're not going to be... It's, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I will say, if, if you know who I am, you know that I don't, I don't put water in my mouth when I'm talking. Okay. Someone has said this before. Uh, the former leader, um, I don't want to call his name, I had mentioned this before. Shio Sani has said it. So if I'm saying it today, I will not be the first to say it. I'm, uh, it's sure. about 8.5 million. Okay, okay. no, about 8. It's 8.5 million so, monthly. Okay, that so, was the only cost. Whether it's been increasing now, I don't know. I heard, I heard there's talk of increasing it. Okay. And this running cost, do they um, include allowances such as fuel allowance, um, newspaper allowance, medical allowance, rent allowance? Or is this allowance is different from the running cost? Uh, the, the, there's no, all that is built into the running cost, really. Newspaper allowance, international journals, international travels and all. It's built into the running cost. Okay. So if you have to entertain people in your office and your constituency office, it's from the running cost. Okay. You are expected to go to your constituency, it's from the running cost, you know. Okay, but if okay, if you expect to go to your and even maintenance, maintenance of the appliances in your office. Okay, now, but I want to ask with that. So, in addition to this running cost and the salary, there's also international travel allowance, correct? No, nothing like that. There's no international travel um, allowance. So, if you're going to the international parliamentary um, mm. groups or organizations, who do you pay out of pocket for that? No, okay, see, that's not an allowance. If you are nominated to go or you're a member of the committee, okay. the house will fund it. Okay. It's not an allowance. It's not they an buy your ticket and then you get your Esther code. Okay. So Esther code, so allowances, allowance. salaries. Money, somebody... These are different monies that are available to our legislators. Hey, don't quote me. Don't quote me. <laughs> I'm not if, quoting if, you, Shia. I'm asking if for clarity. If sends you to... Okay, hold on. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah, I will clarify that. If Arise TV sends you to, as a, 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 a the man in, a, in a Paris now, mm. wrote to me, is it wrote to me? Or Aaron, Aaron Akerjala, yes. I'm sure Arise bought, Aaron, Aaron, yeah, bought, I'm sure Arise TV bought his flight ticket and they will pay for his accommodation and he will have money for him to move around while he's there. Definitely. So that's what the National Assembly does. Okay. If you are going for a parliamentary assignment or even training outside the country, your they buy your ticket and then you get an Esther code, which is basically for your accommodation and for your upkeep while you are there. And this Esther, code, this Esther code is set by the National Assembly. So they determine the cost, they determine the amount, and then they pay themselves, give or take. I, I take just, you back to our right television again. Okay. No, I'm just, I'm just, I was just yeah, trying to clarify. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to go back to what President well, Obasanjo yeah. said Who's about the morality or the illegality in terms of the National Assembly determining their own salaries, their own allowances, their own if travel allowances, travel costs, accommodation. I was just clarifying that these costs are determined by the National Assembly themselves and paid to them themselves. Now, I was just trying to clarify that, going back to what President Abbasandro said. I understand that you're saying that members of the National Assembly are a product of our environment or a product of our society and that people expect their legislators to do more than just legislating. I understand that. But going back to what President Abbasandro said, I'm trying to clarify. If National Assembly members set Esther code, set costs, set the allowances and also set the salary, these different amounts of monies that are available to them. It's set by the National Assembly, correct? No, that's not correct. They so, don't set the salary. I think the salary is set by, is it RAMFAC as a salary? But the one I know the National Assembly fix is the running cost. Even the ESTA code, there is a certain amount of money the cadre of a House of Rep member or a senator should earn. So when agencies sponsor National Assembly members for programs overseas, that Esther code is fixed. So I think that's is a, a, a civil servant might be able to explain this better. But it's fixed, I think that's fixed by the government, the Esther code, and of course, if you are buying flight ticket to America or to the UK or to Dubai, right. National Assembly will not determine that. You are flying business class. And is that the market price that you buy the flight ticket? Business right. class. So
Wait, you were going to say something, one sorry, more thing. I, I just said, just... sorry, you'll be flying business class? <laughs> I, I, I find that fascinating. Oh, the, I think you are, we are dissipating energy. <laughs> on no, no, sorry. Works. No, no, I, you know, because they said it's tough it time. I was just trying to clarify because, you know, they said it's tough time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, and that's where I'm coming in. Um, the, a civil servant. Right. <laughs> Well, all right. A civil servant gets into the civil service with a school set certificate, you know, and he rises to become an assistant director or something like that, or even below that. And he's traveling or she's traveling overseas and is flying business class. And a House of Rep member or a senator that has been everywhere in life. Before I went to the National Assembly, I was the CEO of an oil service company. So if I'm going to go on the business for the National Assembly, I should fly economy? All Come right. on. Well, like Adeswa has said, she, we're, we've been talking about tough times and reducing the cost. I mean, your running cost, like you've said, is 8 million naira. 8 million naira. When the members of the House of Representatives said that they were going to slash their salary, I was one of the people that commented them because they said, you know, they were going to slash it by 50%. Their salary, as you know, is 600,000 naira. And they're going to slash it for, what, six months? And the total will be, be about 108 million by, by the time that all of the members slash their salaries. So people were saying it's a drop in the ocean compared to this amount of money that you have just claimed that is your allowance. I mean, what would you say to people that have criticized this um, amount of money that they said that they're going to slash? And just being a lawmaker and flouting the law, saying that they, you know, this bureaucracy is the reason why um, they did not slash their salary in July. They received 100% of their salary. Okay, Oji, let me clarify a bit. That salary, what actually gets to you at the end of the month is, depends on the deduction, it's about 300,000 naira at times. You know, other times, yeah, 300. It's when you're about finishing the session that the money comes to about 600. Why is it like that? The, you, are, you get a car loan after your inauguration and you have finished your clearance. You get a car loan, you get furniture allowance, you get additional money for your rent. That money is deducted from your salary every month. And I think the salary is about 1 million, 1 million plus, thereabout. So by the time they take out all these deductions monthly, what comes to you is about, um, is about 300, 400. So when you are finishing the term, towards the end of the term, maybe the last six months or one year to the end of the term, to your tenure that you begin to get about 600, 700. So that's for the salary. And like I said, when I was there, the running cost was 8.5 million, not 8 million, so get me right. And like <laughs> I said, again, it's okay, running Okay, an additional 500,000 naira, no problem. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so it's running, like I said, it's running cost. It is running cost. So if you want to do this, compare this with what the civil servants get, Check what the impress of the of a, of a minister, because if you, see, let's be. If we want to have this conversation, let it be holistic. Yes. So, like this one has minister? asked you, About can you help us break down your yeah. running costs so we can find ways to, you know, break it down and you know tighten the budget there? That's really the question here. Okay. The running cost covers a whole lot. Like I also just mentioned to you now. People, members are expected to travel to their constituencies. And I also mentioned the responsibilities of National Assembly members when they go to their constituencies. So if we can task the executive to do more, maybe there will be less burden on the National Assembly members. We, we should have that conversation. So we shouldn't have it in isolation that National Assembly members are getting running costs. What are they doing with it? If you even have to travel Travel to, for, to travel to your constituency, the minimum, when I was in the house, before the Naira even collapsed now, the minimum I go home with, minimum, is 1.5 million. And I don't come back with anything. And there are people that do that more than at least four times in a month. 
There are other times, even if you go twice in a month, while you're in Abuja, your phone is ringing nonstop. So let's get the executive to take care. I mean, to meet the mandate for which they were elected, which is, again, I go back to having a functional primary health care center in every political world. The public schools should work when they take care of some of these things. I mean, there will be less burden on the National Assembly members. I mean, I'm not there today, and I don't plan to go back, so I will not be speaking for them. But this is the fact I have been there, and I, I saw, I mean, I went through it. Right. When I left the National Assembly, I had two accounts. When I was filling my Code of Conduct Bureau form, one of the accounts I had 45,000 Naira. The second, I had 45,000 Naira. I think it was six months after I left that my, my what's it called now, my severance came. It was about 3.7 million naira. But here, I am supposed to have a thanksgiving to thank my constituent for sending me to the house. That budget cannot be anything less than 10 million. So where is that money supposed to come from? Yet, and I was somebody that was not after public funds. I still have to go back to my pockets. So I left the National Assembly poorer than I went there. So let's address the issues. It's not so much of what are they earning a salary or what's the ironic cost. There's a root cause why they get a running cost. All right. It so didn't start yeah. from eight or ninth assembly. So even from the days of Obas and Joe. All right. So you left Pora. Now, now, did you return the vehicle that was given to you? Well, I told you that I was the CEO of an oil service company before I went to the National Assembly. And in that company, we get cars every four years. And maybe even in the banks and the blue chip companies, they get cars every four years, whether the car is old or new. So if I was given a car to serve my constituents, and we, we had a sedan, not a Jeep. So if I was given a Corolla, or um, uh, my car was actually a Camry, you think a Camry would survive Abuja to Edo, my state where I'm from, if you drive that car for four years, so what, will I, what am I supposed to return? But the severance, in your severance, really, all those things are deducted. They are deducted, you know. The, I think there's a scrap value for the car and other items that you are giving the, uh, for, for your office. Right. Computer, laptops, and all that. So by the time they, 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 they talk about the savage value, whatever is left is what is paid to you. All right. Uh, on so the car was paid for. Okay, all right, Honorable, uh, uh, good clarifications there. I'm sure that a lot of people will be interested in how all these allowances and running costs you know, work uh, at the federal level. But I'm wondering uh, if you have not unwittingly uh, put some people in trouble uh, when you say that uh, at the level of assistant directors uh, in the federal government, they fly business class. I'm wondering if you are sure of this fact. Uh, I know of a number of states uh, within the Federation, and Lagos will be one of them, uh, you know, not a too poor a state, as you know. I'm not aware uh, that uh, assistant director uh, civil servants do fly business class, whether local uh, or international. And as a matter of fact, there are some levels of commissioners and permanent secretaries uh, who wouldn't fly business class, who were not, you know, are not allowed to fly business class if their trip is less than six hours. And so I'm wondering when you say as a matter of factly that uh, if uh, assistant directors at the federal level could fly business class, I I'm sure that you probably put in fire uh, unwittingly into the arguments, you know, of, uh, uh, among Nigerians that uh, uh, we're engaging in things that we really cannot afford. So maybe a clarification might be needed if you are not sure of your fact. The second point will be that you aspire to be the governor of Edo State uh, on the platform of Labour Party. And I'm wondering, if you know how Edo State works, will you have approved that civil servants under you at the level of even directors, not just assistant directors, be flying business class, you know, about? And then uh, finally, what will be your thoughts on September 21st, particularly as it affects uh, your party, the Labour uh, uh, Party, where you try to, to be governor uh, for the governorship election on the 21st? Uh, APC is there, uh, PDP is there, even with all the law court. And of course, Labour Party, among a few others. What are your thoughts? And what do you think that uh, Edo people should expect as we move closer to that election? 
Honorable Gung, uh, did you get the questions? I, I gave you quite a barrage there. 